In this video, we're going to use Excel uh, to help us calculate the percent change for data from our potato membrane diffusion lab. Um, Excel is a program that will do a lot of different calculations for you and we can use to create graphs. Uh, it has some distinct advantages over Google Spreadsheets in that it has a lot more functions, uh, can do a lot more things specifically with graphs and analyzing data. Uh, Google Spreadsheets is great if you want to share or collaborate on the data, but it doesn't have as strong of um, graphing abilities, capabilities as Google, as excuse me, uh, Excel does. And so we're going to use Excel uh, for this lab because we're actually going to be creating some graphs that Google Spreadsheets uh, couldn't do very well. So this is data table one from this lab, uh, from our potato diffusion lab, and this is the percent change in mass of solutions. And on the handout on the actual lab, uh, we've got temperature and, and some other information uh, in this data table. But for our purpose in this video, I'm just going to focus on initial mass and final mass because those are the two um, sets of data that we are going to need in order to calculate percent change. A couple of things you'll notice about this. One, I've got my units up here in the kind of uh, title column or title row, excuse me. Uh, we measured in grams, and because we used a digital device, we have a, a error ratio of plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. Um, you notice for the final mass that I can't quite see all of that text, and that's because the text is too long. And so we can actually extend uh, our we can extend this column so that it fits. And the quick and easy way to do that is if you move your cursor in between the C and the D boxes, you'll notice that the cursor changes to this kind of arrow thing. And if I double click on my mouse, it will automatically expand that so that all of this cell right here will fit. Um, so that's just kind of a nice feature. So these are our different trials. I'll add that right here. And obviously, your numbers will, will probably look different. Uh, this is just some example information. Um, and in order to calculate percent change, uh, we're going to basically use an equation. And so I'm going to write that here so we can see what that is. Our percent change equation is the final mass minus initial mass. And I'm putting parentheses around that so that we know we want to do that first or separate from our division. Because our second part is the division uh, by the initial mass. And all of that, once we've calculated that, we want to multiply by 100% because we want this to be in a, in a percent value. So I'll leave that here during the video so that you can see that. Uh, you don't have to type this portion into your spreadsheet. This is just so you can kind of see the formula. And so we're actually going to do that uh, over here in Excel. The nice thing about Excel is once you've got your formula set up, you can have it automatically do the same formula for a, a series in a, um, in a vertical column, and I'll show you how to do that. When we put, a, uh, when we put a, uh, an equation into Excel, uh, the first thing that we want to do is type equals. By typing equals, we're telling um, Excel that we want it to do some sort of function or some sort of uh, equation. And our equation, in this case, happens to be the final mass, mass minus the initial mass. And so I'm going to write parentheses. So you get kind of a sad face there. And if I click on this box that's final mass, it's going to tell Excel to use this box. You'll notice it says C5 rather than putting in the numbers. C5. If I click minus and then our initial mass, B5, it's going to tell Excel to, to take whatever is in this box or this cell and subtract it from this one. The reason why it's better to click on boxes or cells rather than typing in the numbers is if you made a mistake, maybe you recorded one of these incorrectly or you need to go back and change one of these values, if you change the value here by having clicked on these different cells, it will automatically change uh, our percent value uh, or our percent change that's calculated. Um, and I'll actually show you what that looks like in, in a bit. I'm going to close the parentheses, click my division button, which is down by shift, it's the question mark and the little slash and then click on initial mass and press enter. And you'll notice that this spits out a value and that value is in a is in a decimal form. We want to change that to a percent. And so the easiest way to do that really quickly is to go up here. You notice there's a percent button and if I click that button, it will automatically change it to a percent. Now, this percent is only two two significant figures. I want to change this so we've got two decimal points because we made measurements in two decimal points. So if I click on this box and I want to right click, so on the Mac mouse pad, uh, if you click with two fingers at the same time, that's the equivalent of a right click. So I'm going to click with two fingers at the same time. 
and it'll bring up this option menu and if I go down and click format cells we'll see that it's on percentage right here I could change the different type of category that this number is shown in I want it in percents for this one and then I'm gonna change the decimal places to two one two and press OK and so now that's that's in a decimal form uh, rather than doing this for all of them which wouldn't take too long because we only have a few, we only have five more data groups here but if we had a lot of these or if we wanted to speed it up there's a way we can do that really quickly you'll notice when we click on this cell in the bottom right hand corner there's a small blue box if I move my cursor over that box it changes to a black plus or T sign if I click on my mouse and drag down what this will do is this is going to calculate or use the same formula as what we inserted here for all of these values using the information that's in the row. So let's check one of these. Let's check trial number four. If I click on it up on our formula bar, I can see that it says C8 minus B8 divided by B8. Okay, So it's using the same formula that we wanted, but it's using these numbers for this row, which is perfect. It's also displaying it as a percent, and it's also using two decimal points. And so this is calculating the percent change for all of our different values. If you'd like to actually insert text, like if I wanted to put in something else here, if I wanted to write mean, uh, I can actually just type into this column. And in order for text to display, it's shown up here that you can make uh, edits here. If I wanted to write means. Um, in order for text to, to display, the, you just don't add an equal sign. Anytime you add an equal sign, that's telling Excel that you want a calculation or a formula to be used. So that's how you calculate percent change. Again, that's final mass minus initial mass divided by initial mass and times 100%. Um, save this graph because we're going to use this in our next step.